Welcome to the stage, Gurjit Rana. Relationships are like a cup of tea. Now, you might think, really? Relationships are like a cup of tea? Well, let's think about it. You only need two ingredients. Hot water and tea. And of course, a splash of milk for those that you have splash of milk. And that's why it's like relationships, because really, essentially, it's just two people, the two ingredients. And of course, along comes the family, the children, or other people. Call that your splash of milk. So you see, relationships are really like tea. Most of us want to brew our tea to be the perfect cuppa. But how do you get the perfect cuppa? Now here's the thing, you might start off with the perfect cuppa, and then of course, as time evolves, you start to experiment. And all of a sudden, you want soya in your milk, you want almond milk, hey, you want skimmed milk. And don't get me started on water. Bottled water, spring water, pure water, sparkling water, and then the tea bag itself. Is it going to be a fruit flavor? Is it a breakfast? Is it an Earl Grey? And the list goes on. So can you see how the simple cup of tea can become quite complicated really quickly? And you think you can perfect relationships? Now, you might think I'm a little bit mad talking about tea, but the reality is, just like a simple cup of tea can go wrong and can taste off sometimes, so can relationships. In fact, a Harvard study done over 80 years ago also agree that relationships are complicated and can get messy. That same research though also says that people predictably want happiness. Happiness and to belong. And if you look at the core of that, what does it mean to be happy and to belong? It basically means one simple ingredient, which I'll come on to in a minute. I'm Gurjit Rana. I'm a host, I'm a coach, I'm a manager on all things relationships. Now, like you, I just wanted one simple thing, to be loved and to love. After all, that's all we want, right? How complicated can it be? Well, let me share with you. So it's June 2013, and there he is, my gorgeous husband. Full flock of black hair, and he sat drinking his morning cup of tea in the living room. And he's on our beige sofa, with these big red cushions plumping him up as he's enjoying his morning cup of tea. And then I walk in and I notice the coffee table as always, the square one. And you have to kind of be careful because it's one of those rooms where as you walk around the coffee table, you can catch yourself. But the thing I love most about this room, it was where we would chill. But not that morning. That morning, there was a chill for sure, but only in the air. Have you spoken to your sister yet? No, she didn't come round. Interesting, I look to the floor and notice a toy on the floor. And I'm thinking, how did that get there? Does he really think I'm an idiot? Whew. Deep breath, Kurjit. Okay, uh, did you talk to your mum and dad? Interesting, as he nods his head left to right. And I'm thinking, what? Why not? And as these thoughts are racing through my head, I'm thinking, what is it? What the hell am I doing wrong? Why? Why does he do this to me? Have you ever been in that moment when you think you're just bullshitting me? Stop it. Just tell me the freaking truth. And this was the thing, you see. I was left wondering, a bit like a cup of tea, what the hell do I have to do to brew the perfect tea? You see, I'd been brought up by my family in a fairly traditional way, and I was lucky enough to fall in love with this wonderful man. Same religion, the same caste, 
So I thought, you know what? That's half the work taken out of this relationship. But I was wrong. It didn't make a swat of difference. You see, I had learned to make a cup of tea since I was knee high. And I'm not saying it was the best, but I knew what it took to make my family happy. If Gurdjieff brought out a tea, a tray full of tea, that was it. But it was like I was doing that with his family. You see, he was the only son. It was quite a small family, and we'd been married for some years now. But it felt like I'd brought out the cup of tea for the umpteenth time. They just kept rejecting it. They'd take a sip, and in fact, sometimes they wouldn't even take a sip. It was like somebody was just turning their face away. And I was just fed up and exhausted of what did it take to make this marriage work? What would it take to please these people? So, have you ever, in an instant, done something, said something, and then regretted it? Well, here was my big moment. Right, okay, so I've made a decision. We either sort stuff out, we either move out, or I'm leaving you. And off I went to work, and that was it. Now, I'd love to tell you that things were really different, that that tactic worked. In fact, I'd love to tell you that it, he resolved things and we live happily ever after. But unfortunately, that just isn't true. What I didn't know back then, which I do now, that there was a way to save my marriage, but I just wasn't aware of it. See, in that moment, what I ended up causing, whereas I made a threat, I made an ultimatum. And one thing that I've been taught about my family, when you say something or you're gonna do it, make sure you follow through. And I found myself backed into a corner, living up to my integrity to follow through. So there I was, holding back the tears and driving down the M1, wondering how could this be? Where did I fail? How did I fail? How did I give up so quickly? Now, one of the great things about this journey was that I had time. For seven years, I've been on a journey of self-mastery and love of relationships. I've learned what it takes through reading books, for being on various courses, and more importantly, having coaches in my life that have supported me along my journey and helping me discover how to connect and relate to people from a deeper level than them what is superficial. So I can truly say that I have recreated relationships with my friends and family. And so much so, I kind of got me thinking, how many women must have been in that situation or are in that situation where I was so many years ago that were either married and going through the power struggle and thinking, oh my God, can I just get a breakthrough here? with this person, or have divorced and thinking, now what, how do I put the pieces back together and start all over again? And of course, the strains of even trying to meet someone in the first place, the stress is not being worthy enough to be in a relationship. You see, I've brought all my learnings and techniques together to create a wonderful program called Heartfelt Relationship Reset. Let me tell you a little bit about this program. But before I do, let me tell you about the basic ingredient that the Harvard study had referred to. The most basic ingredient is love. Love, which I didn't know what it truly was until I'd left my husband. And that is the journey that I take you on through Relationship Reset, coming from your heart, becoming from your soul, and becoming the person for the love that you seek around you. So how do you do that? There's five simple steps. First of all, you've got to know where are you? Where are you right now? And when I say where you are, you have to have a real honest conversation with yourself. And I know many of us will kid ourselves and pretend, yeah, everything's fine, or you'll just find it easier to blame, complain, compare, and most often cry about your situation. At least that's where I was. Now, if you can be honest with yourself and authentically look at could there be something that you can do? There's always something that you can do, but it starts with understanding where you are in your relationships. Now, the second point is what do you want? 
Now, most of us, I know from many clients that have come to me have said, I want to be happy, quote unquote. Well, what does it take to be happy, I ask? And the same response comes up time and time again. I just want to have fun. I just want to do stuff. I just want to build a life together. I go, okay. Well, what does that actually look like? What is this stuff that you want to do? What is the fun that you want to have? You see, have you ever questioned for yourself, what if the relationship that you're in, your partner loves it and think this is it, this is fun. But you think, oh my God, this is not fun. This is horrible. It could be, but then that's with you. So you need to identify what is it that you actually want. Now I know most of us will get into relationships based off of superficial things that we want. Home, holidays, car. What about beyond that? How do you start creating the relationships you want? And of course, it's not no fault of your own. For many of us women, we have been conditioned to think about the big day. And isn't it funny how we put all our time and effort into creating that one day, but actually not the rest of our life. So as I say, you need to know where you are and what you want. Why, you might be asking. Good question, because that's the third step in the process. When you start to look at why, you'll discover it has actually nothing to do with your partner or even the family or even the current relationships that you have in your life. But it has something to do with an incident. Probably has nothing to do with what you're going through right now. But actually it provides the access to understanding what you're going through right now. And when you know that, when you know why these self-sabotages are happening, these repeated loops of problems that keep happening, whether it's the arguments, where it's the bad behavior, you'll start to discover a new way, a new way forward. And that's the fourth process, which way now? The way forward is when you've discovered where you are, what you want, and why it keeps happening for you to unlock another way forward. And it was there that I discovered that I truly could have saved my marriage because I didn't know any way forward until this moment. See, at that point, I thought I was backed into a corner and that was all I knew. But if I knew what I knew now, and if I had dealt with the why, I would have discovered the way forward. But it's not just taking another different step. It's actually about who you are, which is the fifth step in the journey of relationship reset. Who you are, is not gonna be the same person that's dealing with the problem. Let me put it like this. That old Gurdjit could never have resolved her marriage. She never could have created loving relationships for who she was back then. But today she's another person. And that's the journey that you will go on to discover in order to have what you say you want, you really have to elevate yourself to becoming who you really want to be. Who are you gonna be in your relationships? Who are you going to be for your loved ones instead of what can you get from this relationship? Now, you might be thinking this is all a bit theoretical, so let's put it into some action. So you might be thinking, she keeps banging on about tea. I'm actually a coffee drinker by heart. So let me tell you about tea. T actually stands for an acronym. It's T-E-A. Pretty simple, right? Thoughts, emotions, and actions. You see, what happened with me and my husband was very simple. I had a thought and I reacted upon my thought, which became an emotion. And guess what? I can say this to myself. When emotions are high, intelligence is low. <laughs> I'll say it again. When emotions are high, intelligence is low. And in that moment, it's your emotions that drive the action or reaction. And it's sometimes a good one and sometimes it's a bad one and sometimes, unfortunately, can lead to tricky situations, like why marriages fall apart, because you're just reacting on your emotions and the emotions of the thoughts that you have, not of other people. So there you go, that's what T is, thoughts, emotions, and actions. And we've been talking a lot about it, but let me put it into some context for you. Now imagine, you've done your Saturday morning cleaning, the kitchen is spotless, and you deserve, a, you deserve yourself a well-earned cup of tea. <laughs> so there you are in the living room, having your cup of tea, and then all of a sudden you think, well, I better get up and go and wash this mug now. 
and make a start on lunch or dinner or whatever. And as you go into the kitchen, you're like, hang on a minute, where the hell have these crumbs appeared from? Who's been in here? Who's left this mess on the work surface? Who's left all these crumbs on my mopped floor? Sound familiar? In that moment, you're having some thoughts and it might sound a bit like this, bloody so-and-so, who do they think I am? Their slave? God, have I got nothing else to do all day but to clean up after them? They do it every single time, whether it's the kids or the, kids or the husband or family members. Now, can you see a whole array of thoughts kicking off? And then, of course, God forbid that person walks in through the kitchen and immediately you turn to them and, ah, you've offloaded onto them. Or you've gone the other way. You've gone, oh, you've seen them, you've pulled in the emotion, you've tightened your lip, you've bit your tongue, and you're just starting to get the flash bottle out and swiping, squirting really hard and wiping the surface down as quickly as you possibly can till you can see your face in it. Now, can you see the emotion? Can you hear it? And of course, everything you're doing is driven by that emotion, the way you're acting and reacting to the people. So that's thought, emotion and action in practice. Now, how could you stop it? Well, like I say, it's having an honest conversation with yourself. And by the way, thoughts, emotions, action is part of what I call the creative team maker, which is part of the why within the process model um, that I've talked about with you. So how could you stop it or what could you do differently? Well, I just want you to get present first of all, become aware that it's happening. So I'm gonna give you a little something to think about. I want you to visualize or imagine the person that you most love, and that person standing in front of you, okay? Now I want you to imagine you're saying to them, I love you, I love you. Now as you're saying I love you, I bet you, right, because it happened to me, a whole array of thoughts going off, and how you catch it is I love you, but, but I'm annoyed at you for what you did a couple of years ago. I'm annoyed at you for not supporting me and backing me up with so-and-so. I love you, but you're not, nothing special. I love you, but you're nothing great. I love you, but I won't forgive you or forget what had happened. Can you hear it? Does it sound familiar to you? Now, I bet you that is what's in between you and your partner or you and somebody else, all the thoughts just in that but. And if that's happening to you, I invite you to take on seriously thinking about what you could do differently. Is it time to heal this relationship? And if you say, no, not yet, that's great. You see, that brings us on to uh, technique number two. And what often happens is, many of my clients go on this journey. Thanks for all the tips, Gurdjieff. I know what to do. <laughs> and you do know what to do. Because guess what? We all get to be right. Whichever direction or action we take, we always get to be right. And when we get to be right, guess what? Do you get to be happy? Now you can either be right or you can be happy. And I promise you, both of them reap their own rewards. So what does being right look like? Well, you can be right about, told you, can't change them. I told you, he reacts always like this. It's nothing to do with me or this is going to happen. There's no way this, is, this marriage is going to change or this relationship. There's no way I think I can meet someone or go on a date. And guess what? You're absolutely right. But there's something else about being right. Because how you do one relationship is how you do every relationship. So if you want to explore what it's going to take to change those thoughts, because it's those thoughts that you're saying right now that make you right, that stop you from being happy. So, if those two techniques alone resonate with you, then ask yourself, where do you get to be right? And where do you get to be unhappy in your relationships? Because you know you're being right. I invite you to reach out on my socials. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook. And let's have a conversation to help you. But it's more than that. You see, I've made it my mission to empower women who feel trapped in their relationships marriages or with their family to become independent in learning to love yourself and more importantly, create loving relationships. 
I want to help as many women as I possibly can who I know will have gone through some struggle or are going through some struggle right now. Now imagine if you could transform yourself to make a difference to you and your loved ones and more importantly, become the love you truly seek. Now I want to leave you with one thought. I know you think I'm obsessed with tea, but honestly, where there is tea, there is hope.